Will you please stand with me as we read um, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 8? Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that her warf warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the, wa the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain shall be and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry, and I say, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the, Lord, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord is blown on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the, but the word of our God will stand forever. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Uh, Lord, we praise you for, for your word that endures forever. We just uh, ask you that, Lord, you give us a, a, a heart to, to keep the word at its forefront. So when all flesh fails, that, Lord, that we will endure. Amen. Amen. Okay, good morning. good morning. So today is going to be a little bit special because we're going to talk about the power of the Word of the Lord and how anybody who speaks it, anyone who speaks the Word of the Lord, can bring light and love to other people. Now, this started for me this week when I saw, where is she, Sephora. I saw a video of Sephora speaking the Word, and that video went right into my heart that, her speaking those words went right into my heart and made me think about this. Then I heard Annie Grace and I heard Perry and I heard others speaking memory verses. And because of those words, that's why we're doing what we're doing today. So I just want you to recognize that. But I want to ask everybody here to, to join me in some prayers for some, for some folks that need some prayers. They need all of us to ask God to help them. Can you, can you guys do that for me? Can the kids help too, please? You got it? Okay, any grace? Roger? Okay, good. We're going to just start with some prayer. We're gonna, first and foremost, we're going to pray um, for our sister, Oralee. Lord Jesus, uh, we, we thank you for this time. We thank you for these children that are here and willing to come to you as children and show us an example of what it means to come to our Father in heaven and ask him for help. And today we ask him to help our sister, Oralee who went through a surgery and is going through, has been going through a lot of pain, we ask that your spirit surround her and take away her pain, help her feel better, make sure that she knows that we love her and that she's not alone. And we ask that you bless and keep her parents, uh, Brittany and Richard and Roger and, take, and Linnea as well, her brother and sister. Um, we ask that you heal Miss Brittany and help her hands and, and injuries feel better too and give her strength, give Richard strength and capacity and Roger and Linnea too. We also ask that you bless and heal Callie, who was uh, a relative that was injured a while back and that her injuries heal rapidly. We also ask um, that you bless Caitlin, who's having a baby in April um, and that their family is surrounded by your spirit, and they know that no matter whether they're with or uh, near or far, they are never alone, and that, um, that God loves them and, and will be with them. We also ask that you bless Jessica and Joseph, who are fostering a little girl named Temperance, and that, um, that the Lord blesses that, their willingness to support that child, and that uh, she knows that she is in the hands of uh, people that love her very much. We ask that you bless um, uh, Sally's brother, Doug, who is having some health issues right now, and that you be with him. We ask that you bless and remove the fear from uh, Emery's uh, nephew, Jamie, 
Um, just give, let him know that he is not alone and that there is nothing to fear in, uh, when he is under the stewardship of the ultimate shepherd. We ask that you continue to remove the ants and other things from, uh, from the rails house. Continue to do your work there. Finally, we ask that you, you bless and keep Sally and Ron safe on their travels today. And finally, um, we ask that you bless the, the, the soon-to-be marriage of Tara and Robbie and that that marriage be uh, blessed and founded on the truth and the word of your son, Jesus Christ. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, thank you for that. Um, so, I've got a question. Who, so, just last week, we had something called Valentine's Day. Do you guys remember this? Yes. You remember this? Okay. You can speak, you can answer questions. I'm asking a lot of questions, so if you, f- if you have a question you want to answer, you can say it, okay? So, who remembers Valentine's Day like a few days ago? Okay. You saw flowers and cards and all these kind of things. Now, just in seven days, I don't know if you've noticed if you have flowers in your house, but these flowers in some cases are starting to wilt. Who's seen that happen? Like a flower, you cut it, it looks good, and then it starts to wilt, right? I think even Annie Grace and Perry had some that were starting to wilt whenever I got them. Um, And the only thing about these kinds of presents, Valentine's Day cards or flowers and things like that, is that regardless of whether you water the flowers or you try to take care of the cards, is that they always kind of fade. They always kind of wilt and go away. There's no way to keep those flowers alive forever. But I want to ask you the question, what if there was a gift that you could get that instead of you having to water it like you might water a flower, it waters you. It actually gives you life. What if this was also a gift that you could use like a warrior to defend yourself and others? What if, there was a, what if this, this, this gift had the power to actually set other people free from being fearful and scared? And what if it was a guide that no matter what goes on in your life and no matter how old you get, it would always tell you the direction you need to go? And no matter how dark things might get, it would give you the path. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So who, especially in the kids group, and adults, you're, you're able to answer this too, who wants to be stronger? Oh, okay, all right. Who wants to be not afraid of stuff? Who wants to bring love into the heart of Jesus? Okay. All right, well, we're going to read the Word, and you're going to see how you guys speaking the Word has led to, again, this lesson. But we're going to read the Bible verse that God get, saw fit to give us for this week in 1 Peter 1, 22 through 25, and we're going to get a bonus verse of 26. So just listen along with me. And we're going to read this. Now, what this is, is this is a letter from Peter. Do you guys remember Peter in the Bible? He's the one that said, you know, he walked on the water and he got scared with the waves and he fell into them. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus grabbed his hand. You remember him? This is a letter that he wrote to churches. So there are all these churches out there and he wrote this letter to encourage them. So it's almost like he wrote this to us. So this is what he said. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, For the sincerely brotherly, that could also mean sisterly for the sisters here, for for the sincere brotherly or sisterly love, love each other earnestly. Now what that means is unfiltered, like nothing, holding nothing back. Who's tried to do something like really hard, like all out, just as hard as you can go? Okay, to love somebody like that, right? There you go, Perry. Um, From a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, and through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass, and its glory like the flower of grass, and grass withers and the flower falls. So remember, the Valentine's Day flowers, they fall apart, the, the invites go away, but here's what doesn't go away. The word of the Lord remains forever. Now, who has been memorizing the word of the Lord? Every, all these guys, you've all been memorizing. So you've been putting a gift from God into your heart and mind that will never fade. It's never going to go away like the flowers. It's never going to go away like the invites and the valentines. It's never going to go away. And he says, and this word is the good news that was preached to you. So you're actually, you're actually hearing the word right now. And guess what? Even earlier this week, Sephora gave me the word. 
So nobody is too young to share the word. Nobody's too old either. I'm not looking at Mama's on top. Uh, so <laughs> Moses didn't get started until he was 80. I told you. Okay. So what does is, what is the word say to do? Now listen to this, children and adults. He says, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. Now those might be some fancy words. But we're going to talk about what each one of those things is. He says, put away malice. Who knows what malice is? That's a kind of an interesting word. Malice means like evil things. So just bad things. He says also all deceit. Now deceit would be telling a lie or telling a secret or keeping a secret. And hypocrisy. That's where you say you're going to do something and you don't do it. And then envy. Oh, this is a tough one, right? Who, who has said, I, 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 I kind of feel bad because that person has more than me? Has anybody felt that? Where you, you're like, you kind of feel like, oh, that person has something more than me, so I, it doesn't feel fair. I'm angry. That's called envy, comparison. And then slander. Slander is when if you talk, say bad words, bad things about somebody else. So Jesus says, put all those things away. And instead, preach the good news. Now, that's, that's the word that we heard, but I want to ask the children, do you know, first of all, did you know Jesus loves little children? Do you guys know that? Have you heard this in a song? Is there a song about this? There is? Okay. All right. Well, do you know where that comes from? Because the Bible, yes, and I'm going to show you one of the places in the Bible where Jesus talks about that, because the word tells us that Jesus loves little children because they show us an example, and in Matthew 18, 6, he says, and this is what was happening. At the time, the disciples came to Jesus. Now, for the children, the disciples were adults. They were like grown-ups, right? They came to Jesus, and they said, Jesus, who's the best? Who's the greatest in the kingdom? And what he did is he took somebody. Roger, will you come up here with me? Here. He came over there, and he grabbed the child, and he said, he said, he did this. He said, look, look here. He said, he said, and calling to him a child... He put him in the midst of them, and he said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Roger. Good prop. So, uh, Jesus says he, he loves how the children were humble. And the, the, the adults were arguing about who was best. And there was this little child that was just sitting there being quiet. And he brought the child up and he showed them. The child showed the grown-up an example. Now, did you also know Jesus tells us not to just be humble, but to be obedient? Now, who has heard their parents say, listen to me? Oh, okay, okay. Who said, who's heard their parents say, obey? Okay. Yes, listen, Perry told us to listen and obey yesterday. So here's, here's the thing. Did you know God makes a promise to children? Listen to this, a promise that has a gift. Who wants a gift from God? Okay, God gives you a formula on how to get a gift from God. You want to hear it? Who wants to hear it? Okay, here it is. Children, and this is from Ephesians. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. And he says, this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So he's saying is that children, when you obey your parents and you follow the commandment of honor your father and mother, it'll go well with you. Your life is going to be better. You guys want, who wants a better, like, wants their life? Yeah, of course. Well, there's a simple formula. You've got to listen and obey your parents. Guess what? Guess who also has to listen and obey their parents? Grown-ups. Right? And guess what? Who's, who's, our, who's our father in heaven that we've got to listen to and obey? Oakley. Who is it? Yes. There you go. So how can we listen to God? Sephora, how do we listen to God? We obey him. Yeah. And where can we find what God has to say? Oakley? The Bible. The Bible. Bingo, you got it. Okay, so um, 
here's the thing about the Bible. One of the benefits of the Bible is the Bible is going to show you what is true and false. And the more you memorize it and the more you put it in your, in your mind and in your heart, you will be able to see what is true and what is false. So who's watched lots of cartoons or books or things like that or movies? Who likes all that? Andy Grace, you love movies and things. But the Word, when you put the Word in your heart, you're able to look at it and discern, is this something that would, Jesus would like? Yeah? Or yes. yes, right? Now, we can ask that question, would Jesus, what, what in this would Jesus not like? Right? Sometimes we can look at a movie. We watched a movie the other day, and we said there's some things in the movie that Jesus may not like. So what do we do when we see something that Jesus wouldn't like in a movie or a show or something people are saying? What do we do? Annie Grace. Delete it. Delete it. That's, a, that's one way to do it. Yes. Marquesa, what do you think? Not watch it. Yes, Oakley. Think of the... Yes. That's right. Because what is not from Jesus and what is from Jesus cannot occupy the same spot. You guys hear this, adults? Exchange the thing from the world with the word. Thank you, Oakley. More questions for you in just a second. So, what happens when you disobey your parents, children? What happens when you disobey? Sephora. Sephora. You get in trouble. Yeah. What else happens when you disobey your parents? Oakley? Well, yeah, because you're not, you're not, God says for children to obey their parents. So yes, you're disobeying God. Here's what, here's what happens. The, 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 the scripture right here says they stumble. It's talking about people that are, that are stumbling. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. So what happens when you stumble? Who's, who here has skinned their knee really bad, like running and on concrete and skin their knee and hurt themselves? Well, it's probably, like, that's what happens. You stumble when you disobey the Word. And so that's why it's really important to do that. And the Bible tells you, children and us, how to respond to our parents uh, when they're teaching us something. He says in Proverbs, this is what the Bible says, uh, to its parents talking to children. He says, Listen, my son, for your father's instruction, to your father's instruction, do not forsake or forget the teaching of your mother, for they are like a great they are a garland of grace on your head and like a pendant around your neck. So what this is saying, children and adults, is that when you take the teachings of your mother and father and you listen to them and you don't forget them, it's like wearing a crown on your head and a beautiful necklace. And then he says, my son, if sinners entice you, if someone says, hey, come over here and do this bad thing, or here's something that you know is wrong, he says, do not yield to them. Do not give in to them. That's Proverbs 1, 1 Proverbs 1.10. And then later he says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments, for they will add length to the days of your life and peace to your life. So we're told that if we obey our parents, that we'll be blessed. But what are parents told to do? Now, I know this is, I always heard this in church, and they said, children, you got to do this. Did you know your parents have something that they're supposed to do too? What are they supposed to do, Perry? Okay, yes. (laughs) Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart with it. So children, we are... We are told we have to train you. Now, it doesn't say tell the child what to do. It says train up the child. So what does that mean? It means that we've got to teach you the word. We've got to be obedient to God ourselves. We've got to be loving and forgiving. And we've got to show you more than tell you what God would have us do. But did you know, here's one other point. Did you know that when you are memorizing and reading the Bible, you are actually connecting directly with Jesus. You're not just looking at word on, words on a page. Did you know that? Did you know that, Marquesa? You did. I know you did. 
So when you're, you're putting his love in your heart, and that love can allow you to guide others, because it says this in John 1, 1 18, he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was, the, uh, Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he is in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him there's nothing else that could be made. In him was life, and the life that was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So when you memorize and listen to and read the Word, and you put that in your heart, that light will shine from within you. No darkness could ever overcome you. You guys understand this? Oakley, you got this? Yeah, I know you do. Okay. All of us. Okay, so you got that. But who likes gifts? Who likes gifts? Children? Any raise? No gift for you? Brother John likes gifts. Anybody else like gifts? Only about half the people like gifts. Okay. All right. Okay, right? So we, there's like all kinds of gifts you can get. You can get toys. You can get flowers. You can get dresses. You can these fl- silver, gold, all kinds of things could be, could be gifts. And I see everybody's perking up when I'm talking about gifts. But here's the thing. The Word of God is the most precious gift, one of the most precious gifts that you can, you can take and you can get inside of you. But it's also one of the things that you can give. Now, who knows what a warrior is? What's a warrior? Oakley, I know that you know this one. A soldier. A soldier? What do warriors do? They fight. They fight. Andy Grace? They fight and they protect their country. Or something. They protect their country, yeah. They protect their land. Anybody else? What's a warrior? Roger? Uh, he protects he people. They protect people, yes. Now, what do we, we were just told what do warriors fight against? He said, fight against malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. We're going to fight, these warriors fight against evil things, lies, deceptions, uh, bad words, saying bad things about people. But what do warriors have to have? Like, what do, what do all warriors have? Marquesa? What? Strength. Strength, yes, that's one thing. Weapons, Weapons yes. What's that? Sword. Sword, yes. What else? Bravery. Bravery. You guys got all of them. And? Shields. What is it? Shields. Shields. Armor. Yes. You, got all. <laughs> you guys read my homework right here. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to talk about each one of those things. Swords, armor, bravery, and strength. That's what reading the Bible gives you. And whenever you put it in your mind and heart, just like you guys have been doing, you have all of those things. Okay. Watch this. So this is the way the Bible describes the Word. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through to the divisions of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. No creature is hidden from its sight, and all are naked and exposed in its eyes, to whom we must give account. It means that that Word, whenever you have the Word of the Lord in in your heart and in your speech, that you can cut right through falsehood with the truth. It'll show you where to go, what to be concerned with, and nothing can stand against that. So no matter, no matter how old you are, <clears throat> the, word, the Word will show you what is right and wrong. It'll show you truth and lies. Now, you said war, who said warriors are strong? Who said that? Oakley. Where do warriors get their strength? Um, from Jesus. From Jesus, Yes. They train for it. Beautiful. So how do we train with our weapon of the sword, the spirit of the word? How do we train with that? Um, do, I do, lessons? do lessons and memorize. Guess what? Every one of you that has been memorizing the scriptures has been training. You've been in weapons training. You've been making yourself stronger. So in uh, Ephesians, it says... Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So our strength comes from, like Oakley said, Jesus. And guess what? He also gives us armor. Did you say a shield? You said a shield. Let's talk about what the armor of God looks like and how each of you have it. So he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. When you put this armor on, the devil can't get you. And you can stand against him. You can fight him. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, 
cosmic powers over this present darkness and the spiritual forces of in heavenly places. Um, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand this evil day. Stand, therefore, having the belt of truth, the truth of the fact that Jesus was resurrected and died for our sins. Having the breastplate of righteousness, that means you're being like God wants us to be, not telling lies, doing the right thing. And his shoes for his feet, putting on, put, having put on the readiness, meaning that we're ready to move, ready to act. Are warriors fast? Yeah, they're fast, right? Right, Roger? Pretty fast? Yeah, they're fast to fight. And given the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. That is, the shield of faith is that you are certain in your fact that you belong to Jesus. And no one else can ever take you out of his hand. And with that shield, you can extinguish all these fiery arrows that the devil might shoot your way. And finally, take up the helmet of salvation, which is to know in your mind, with a helmet that protects your mind, that he has saved you. And the sword, we talked about this, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and the Word is your weapon. Now, here's where this comes all together. Here's how you put the sword, the shield, the armor, and the bravery together. And you all, all the children, you guys have all been training in this. You pray at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance and make supplication, meaning make asks for all of the saints. In other words, we're going to pray and ask for help for your brothers and sisters like Ora Lee. And, he, and then Paul says, also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly. This is the other part. You've been given the word, but then you've also been told when you have the word and you feel the prompt or the opportunity to share the word, to open your mouth bravely. Who said, who said warriors are brave? Roger. So when you have the opportunity to use the sword of the word, be brave. Got it? Okay, <laughs> I know you do. To proclaim the mystery of the gospel in which I am an ambassador in change that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So speaking the word of God is always, always the right thing to do. So be brave and strong. And I'm going to call... Uh, I'm going to create an opportunity here um, to share the word. So you, you guys have, all the children have been working on memory verses. There's an opportunity here. Oralee couldn't be here today because she's got to stay at home. But she's watching on the camera. So I want to give you each an opportunity to come up here and say something nice to Oralee and then share your memory verse, okay? Got it? All right, I see some smiles. Sephora? Can you, can you come first? I know you wanted to. You're gonna, you can stand right up here on this chair so you can be in the camera. <laughs> Make sure you do. Okay. There you go. So you can look right there. Orly's watching you say something to her, and then you can tell your verse. Okay? Okay, go. I hope you feel better, Orly. Now you can say your verse. Philippians 4. Four through eight. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but an end. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds throughout Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue or anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Amen. Thank you. Any <laughs> grace? Come on.
and really hope you have a good day. And I don't know what chapter this is, but I do know the verse. There you go. The greatest things to have is faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all these three things are is love. Thank you, Annie Grace. Who, who wants to come next? Marquesa? Yeah. I don't think you need the chair. <laughs> I hope you feel better and have a good day. Who can understand? No, wait. Psalm 1912 through 14. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servants also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Psalm 9. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 19, 12 through 14. Beautiful. <laughs> Roger, you want to come? Roger, you want to come? Yeah, come on. Say something to sister. <laughs> she can see you right there. Can you tell her something? She can see you in that camera. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that want to something? No. Okay. Cast our cares on the world, we will stay in song 5522. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think you might be in the middle. You can stand on the chair. Um. And then don't forget to tell Elise. I hope you feel better so you can be here next Sunday. The Most High does according to his will in the army of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? Daniel 4.35. <laughs> okay. Come here. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Hey, tell, tell, tell Orly she, to feel better. I feel better. Okay. Now wait. What does Jesus say? Follow me. Follow me. What else? The other Kimmy. Yeah? Little girl. Little girl. I say to you, arise. I say to you, arise. What else does Jesus say? Follow me. And? Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. Okay. <laughs> All right, children. Thank you for showing us beautiful examples of what it is to have the word in your heart. I can tell you that you speaking the word up here put love in everybody's heart here, in Oralee and Miss Brittany at home, and Linnea, and all the other people that are going to see this. So now what I want you to do, go with Miss Susanna, and she has a special craft for you that you're going to do to, to send to Oralee. It's always like it feels like a risk, but it's not really a risk. Uh, I just had that on my heart since, since I saw Sephora this week. I just couldn't let it go. I just couldn't shake it. So I was like, that's what has to happen. Um, because it's, this, this verse is all about uh, the word. It's really just about the word. And I was like, where have I seen the word so much this week? So um, 
And there's a lesson inside of all of that for all of us. But I guess I would just end, you, end with this. Um, what, you know, what, they're, what they're examples of, they've been doing the reps to, to memorize this. And, you, and, and uh, just by them repeating these things, it just spreads. And we all have that ability. Um, so we have to be doing the work. So the, kind of the, the calls to action, the questions to consider this week is, and again, this last verse is, is indicting, it says, is, is what malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander will I put away this week in my life? What is the malice, the deceit, the hypocrisy, the envy, or the slander that I will put away in my life this week? And then number two, what am I willing to exclude from my life so I can ingest more of this living and abiding word and exchange time and mind, mind share of the world with time and mind share in the Word. We're going to pray, and then uh, we're going to have uh, Mike's going to lead us in the Lord's Supper. Lord Jesus, uh, we, thank you, uh, we thank you for this time and space and this opportunity to come and orient ourselves to your Word. But on this day, I, I just uh, have tremendous gratitude for uh, your willingness to uh, give us children to shepherd. Because uh, truthfully, the gift in children is that we get to see a little glimmer of what it's like for you to have us. We're not always obedient, often don't listen, we don't do the things right like we should. But then there are those moments where we do. And we know those are the moments that, we are, that you are greatly pleased with us. These children all exemplified that today by speaking the word of the Lord out loud, even when it was scary for them, even when they were nervous, whether they had the words or not. Um, but they still did it. Thank you for the example they set for us. And give us the courage this week to not only create the room necessary to ingest more of your living and abiding word, but that when we are prompted and we are, create, and we are given the opportunity, that we speak it and we act it out. Please bless our sister orally and take away her pain. Um, give her comfort in this day. We love you and thank you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brian, for um, doing that with the service today. Um, that was a huge blessing um, as a believer uh, and as a father. So I thank you for, for doing that and putting that together. Um, I get to see that at home with them, but seeing that in front of a group of believers at church is just a whole different kind of gift and blessing. So thank you for that. <clears throat> um, Coming into the Lord's Supper uh, this week, I just kept hearing an earlier passage of 1 Peter uh, that we've already heard, uh, preached, and taught on, um, and something just kept sticking out to me over and over again in 1 Peter uh, 1, 16, uh, where he says to us, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Um, that, that's quite a task set before us. Um, not that we do it in our own strength, uh, which is clear. If you're a believer, it's the Spirit. It's God working in you that brings that about. Um, but just the pursuit of it, chasing after it, uh, that's tall order. Um, and it's only keeping our sight on Him that's going to bring that to be. And uh, we heard something. Uh, some of the men were at a conference uh, Friday at Countryside, and Pastor Tom Peddington talked about the idea of above reproach, um, which I think falls right in line with this, be holy for I am holy. Um, and he pointed out that it's not perfection, it's direction, which I thought was a huge clarification of understanding of the idea and the process of how this operates, that it's not, it's not perfection, you're not going to be perfect, there's no call to be perfect, 
but it's the direction you're moving. Um, and when the Spirit brings something up, when God reveals something to you, it's that the willingness is already there that you act the second he says it, the second he shows it to you, you react, you respond, you move with it. <clears throat> so um, in light of that, and with us approaching the table, um, which we should never do lightly, um, I'm going to give us all a moment to ask the Spirit to search us, to show us if there's any way that we are not right with him, uh, and in conjunction with that, if we're not right with another believer or uh, any person at all for that matter. Um, so I'm going to give us some space to ask him to search us and show us that, and then we will pray, and we will take communion together. Father, we thank you for this time together. Uh, we thank you for your spirit indwelling and sealing all of us as believers. Uh, I pray that you would continue that work, that you would make us more and more sensitive to the spirit's movement and what he's doing, what he's showing us, and that in not our strength, but in your strength and in the strength the spirit gives us, that we would readily respond when something is revealed without hesitation without question uh, without arguing with you or debating it over with you that we would just act and move in obedience and that as you tell us we would be holy as you are holy and continually move in that direction i pray that you be with us now uh, as we partake in what was handed down to us as the lord's supper together in jesus name amen as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. to sing hymn uh, number 157, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. <coughs> Again, we'll sing the first and the last verse. <coughs> Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt, yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was filled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe, all who are longing to see his face. Will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is grace. 
Please join me in closing prayer. Uh, Lord, thank you for today. Um, that was wonderful to see all of those children come up here and speak your word. Um, over these past few weeks, we've learned about your enormous love, and, and we pray to continue to understand that in greater depth. Um, and we know from, from understanding this better and better that we need to fight what is evil. And we ask that you help us to do this, to, to don the armor, the sword, the bravery and the strength that we need in order to fight all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, and all slander. Help us to love you uh, and, and to act out that, that pure love, humbleness, and obedience that we saw in, in those children today. Help us have a, a childlike love for you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.